Welcome everybody to Two Rivers Talks. Your source for all news and events and fun things and celebratory things having to do with the fair city of Two Rivers. I'm your host Todd. Hi, I'm Darla. Your other host. And uh, we're really glad that you're able to join us today and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I think that uh, I'm looking forward to some uh, excellent apple pie with soused raisins in there, rum raisins. Soused? Yeah. Yeah, we soaked the raisins for about oh, a week. Oh, so they're in, soused? In spice rum. Yeah, they're oh. soused. Okay. Soused raisins, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. It gets rid of the wrinkles, too. I'm it sure. does. It makes me very young and youthful. Or at least I feel youthful when I'm, when I'm eating it. Anyways, <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, we got a great show planned for you today. Uh, we've got a, uh, two really fantastic guests, uh, the first of uh, whom is uh, Jeff Soxie, uh, the uh, founder of uh, Raleigh Point Economic Advising. Uh, he's going to be talking to us a little bit about his efforts with Light Up the Lakeshore, uh, some competition events and some other events, uh, some really cool stuff, and a little teaser for those of you who maybe remember Snowfest Parade. Oh, yes. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that with him as well. Um, also, we have a musical guest. Right, and that's uh, James Willoughby. Um, he is a local guitarist, and actually he, he plays more than just the guitar. He's uh, also a percussionist and knows how to play other instruments too. So I'm hoping that he brings along more than just his guitar. That's great. Is he going to play them simultaneously? Just like with Seal. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, he has them up on a low wall and he uses his nose yeah, and like pops things. Yeah. So, but anyway, but he's a young, a younger guy. Um, my son was good friends with him in high school, and uh, since they've graduated, they have reconnected. Thus, I've reconnected uh, with James. But he's a very nice young man, very talented. Well, we're looking forward to talking to him. Great. Awesome. Um, so we'll talk about the Two Rivers calendar. Just to mention that City Council is meeting on Monday, November nineteenth, at six p.m. Um, on November 26th at 6 p.m., which is also a Monday, we are going to have a City Council work session, which the public is also invited to attend, as well as just regular City Council meetings. Um, what if I wanted to stop by City Hall on Thanksgiving? I think, I think you'd be out of luck. Really? Mm-hmm. Darn it. <laughs> Do you really want to be no, there no, really. on okay. Thanksgiving? <laughs> um, Actually, Todd, City Hall will be closed Thursday the 22nd and Friday the 23rd. So I can't even go there on Black Friday? Would you really want to? Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> wait, wait to pay your bills. Just just wait. I, I get really pumped about City city Hall. You know, okay, so. yeah, I get you too. <laughs> That's why I like you. You're a little, a little off the beam. Um, That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Uh, so we've got some winter parking restrictions in effect um, as of December 1st through March the 15th. Uh, so parking is allowed on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, 1.30 to 6.30 a.m. Right. Unless a snow emergency is declared. Right. And I think 6.30 a.m. is when parking is allowed. That's considered not overnight anymore. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it kind of just kind of runs into, your, into the regular day, but starting at 1.30 in the morning on for those two days. Unless there's a snow emergency. Right. Which we never have. Okay, find some wood and knock on it because so far <laughs> the way this this fall is, That's um, true. it's pretty, I don't know, hopefully it's not too indicative of what we've got to expect for the next couple of months. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So. Um, two Rivers Main Street. Wanted to let everybody know um, about the hometown Christmas parade. It's going to be on November the 24th at 5.30 p.m. It starts at 22nd Street and it and uh, Washington Streets and travels south to 16th. So it'll be coming this way down the road. Where is is this 16th over here? So it's going to go right past my place, far out. Oh, we can sit in the window and watch. Oh, that's great. You, should we do like the regular like holiday parade things and do sort of like the blow by blow? I, I think we should. <laughs> From the comfort of our own, from our own stage. From the Basilishka Bibble Bubble, right? Yeah, really. Where it's nice and warm, let everybody else breathe. <laughs> Sounds good. I like it. I we, like we where We love you guys, is. but, yeah. Um, anyway, the Christmas Parade is sponsored by Shoreline, Shoreline Credit Union and is presented by Two Rivers Main Street. Um, before the parade, from 2 to 5, kids... There's going to be a kids' Christmas at the Washington House. This sounds like a lot of fun. 
Um, would you like to tell our viewing audience what to expect? Well, it's going to include Christmas craft projects for children. That was a little alliterative, uh, uh, difficult to get it out. Christmas craft project. Okay. Anyways, um, games and prizes. Uh, there will be some food provided, and uh, it is a free event open to the public. So come on down and check it out. Oh, and after the parade? Uh, Jolly Old St. Nick will be in the community house uh, where you can also enjoy some pocho, otherwise known as hot chocolate, um, provided by Schrader's. <laughs> you know, I just do this to try to crack you up. <laughs> it works. I've never, hocho, it just sounds like a really bad sort of hooch. <laughs> no, if you do it right, it's, 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 really the, good. it's the right kind of hooch. So right? it is, it's Irish hocho. Irish hocho, okay. sure. Yeah. Why not? We'd be drinking Irish Ocho while we're watching the parade. <laughs> this, that can make it really interesting. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. All right. Um, November 24th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. is Small Business Saturday. And this is really important to, um, to the small business owners down, downtown. Uh, it's an American shopping holiday to celebrate and help discover small businesses. And uh, so come on downtown um, shop local and uh, there's going to be in different venues specials prizes and more I'm not sure what I'm doing here yet mm -hmm. I'll figure something out yeah yeah well come on down and find out what uh, what will be at the art gallery as well um, speaking of prizes uh, the two rivers Main Street raffle calendar is uh, still on sale uh, they are $20 a piece. Uh, there are only 1,500 calendars that are going to be sold for the event. Um, the neat thing is uh, that there will be $8,600 in cash prizes given away in 2019. Uh, they are available at, well, here, at Basilishka Bibbles, uh, at uh, Delbro uh, Jewelry. Jewelry. Uh, Jewelry, yes. Um, at uh, Seeds and Beans. Schrader's department store and uh, at Two Rivers Main Street itself on the third floor of City Hall. That's right. But not on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving. That's right. Because they're closed. And I'll be closed on Thanksgiving. Everybody's closed on Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. I'm forgiven? You're forgiven. Okay, good. Always. Like it would matter. <laughs> <laughs> any, any hoodly do new tagline. I've decided to keep it. Hoodly do. Um, okay. At the community house, this, I think, is a really, really nice idea and a nice gesture by the Community House. On November 22nd at noon, there's a community-sponsored Thanksgiving dinner. And it's served family style, and you need to call for reservations. And at the uh, down below under links, I will also have the phone number that you can call, but I'll just go ahead and just say it out loud right now. You would want to call 793-5596 to make reservations, but I think this is when you show the uh, the spirit of the community to have something like this for for our our, our residents um, speaks a lot to the character of what Two Rivers is all about. Sounds, sounds like a really it does wonderful event. Yeah, um, great. That's J. E. Hamilton Community House. Correct. Okay. Um, so we have some things coming up to Lester Public Library, of course. Um, adult events. Oh wait, that doesn't sound good. Grown-up events. Uh, Grown-up events. A foreign film. Uh, bring a beverage, and they'll supply the popcorn. Right. Um, adult beverage is probably not most. That's what most I'm likely. thinking. It's got to be like a soft drink or yeah, a bottle of water. Right. right. Yeah. Um, genealogy Club uh, will be presenting on using the internet for genealogy research, followed by sharing and research su suggestions. If you're a beginner, they'll help you get started. Uh, bring uh, your gathered information on any kinds of projects you're working on, searching into the family history. And uh, new members are always welcome, so it's an opportunity to discover your story. Awesome. And for youth programs at this time, and I think probably because we're right around the holidays, for the youth, there's they only have story time. Um, however, the teen programs, they are continuing with the Hot Wheels Arduino Labs. And I didn't really realize it, but it's Hot Wheels 50th anniversary. Oh, very cool. Which I yeah. didn't realize, it, but I look back to when I was a kid, and I right. just remember having a, a Hot Wheels, and it was a little miniature hot pink Volkswagen. Really? And I was in grade school. Okay. So, and I remember that. So I oh, yeah. tend to forget how old I really am. So actually, 
no, Hot Wheels is only 20 years old now. So, but um, for the Arduino Labs, uh, the kids will be able to build a racetrack and uh, program an awesome Arduino timing system. And um, everyone will utilize the track at a derby, and there are prizes. Um, and that's going to be on December 5th. You'll need to call up the library to register. It's for ages 10 and up. You know, not only is that a, a great, like, fun event to, to do, um, but I, I think it's such essential skills uh, for young people to learn programming uh, that I think it's very worthwhile oh, absolutely. To, to, to get involved with something like that. Absolutely. And I kind of wonder, too, um, you know, just how involved they get in uh, with working with the circuitry, if they get to use some soldering skills, or I'm not sure just how involved it is, but know. programming, yeah, it is. It's essential life skills these days. It is. It really is. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, there's another teen program event. Uh, there are two upcoming teen DIY holiday workshops: uh, headbands and fuse bead ornaments, a solution for that little something that you want to make for friends or family. Uh, they'll have all the supplies on hand, and that's uh, ages 10 and above. Okay. When you make my headband, yes. Can you what? please add feathers? Feathers. Okay. Yeah. And and bangles, of course. Well, in sequins. sparkles, sequins, right? <laughs> just, With cool little lights, little LED lights. <laughs> make them make them see me from space. I might be doing this project for a while, everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, again, and this is on a recurring basis. TRT night, late night at the library, and I'm still not really too certain exactly what they do, yeah. but I'd be really interested to find out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we should do like a little camera there that night, just kind of go and... Yeah, oh, we could do anything we want. interview them, yeah, that's right. Oh, that would, why not interview them? Sure. They'd probably enjoy it. What are you doing teen night? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, trying to get old people with a creepy camera. <laughs> <laughs> We're right. trying to get away from people like you. <laughs> and for adult programs, there really aren't any. <laughs> but we, we did talk about the adult events a little bit earlier. Oh. So, yeah. I There's just, okay, I duplicated. Yeah. Okay, I am redundant. All right. Notes. The adults have plenty this of This is season stuff to zero, do. people. So, we're still getting, you know, we're getting used to all this. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> We're trying. Um, the library is going to be closed on Thursday, November the 22nd. Correct. Uh, but it appears it'll be open Friday the 23rd. Okay, enough about books. Um, Two River Senior Center. Um, Cut Out Christmas Cookie Sale is going to be November 29th and 30th from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. And they have them both frosted and unfrosted. And I don't know why you'd want to go with an unfrosted one, unless you want to buy a whole bunch of them so you can frost them yourself That's true. and pass them off as your own creation. Do you frost and yeah, I made them. I slave. Yeah. Yeah. I think, Ooh. I think that's worth. I think it's worth a trip yeah. over yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Check that out. <laughs> um, the Tuber Schools. Let's see. So there's going to be a. Oh, I love these. Saruchi's candy bar sale. Um, Two Rivers High School. It's going on now. And it's going to be a fundraiser for European travel. Right. And I don't have the particular details of that as to what trips they're planning or what countries that they are looking to visit. Sure. So I, I plan on getting in touch with the high school before our next podcast and getting a little bit more, more. information yeah. on this. Because since I'm not going to be able to chaperone the seniors on their New York trip, mm. I wouldn't mind chaperoning some kids over in Europe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Through the like Ireland. And I know. Belgium, yeah, anywhere. Awesome. Yeah, but for now, all you need to know is that they're selling Sarugis, which is terrific. And go ahead and try some. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, there's some sporting events coming up. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those, darling? Certainly. And this is all. Um, all this information is uh, L.B. Clark uh, boys basketball. Monday, November 19th, L.B. Clark eighth grade boys um, are going to be at home. 7th grade boys basketball is going to be at Wilson in Manitowoc. On Tuesday, November 20th, L.B. Clark 8th grade boys will be at Keele, 7th grade boys at home. Tuesday, November 27th, the 8th grade boys will be at Sheboygan Urban, and the 7th grade boys will be at home. And to round it out, on Thursday, November 19th, um, the 8th grade boys basketball will be at home and the seventh graders are going to be in New Holstein. And 
just a, a reminder, um, there's no school Wednesday the 21st through Friday the 23rd. Yes. So everybody gets a chance to eat a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And lots of basketball events for those who love watching basketball. Yay. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> I'm getting more enthusiastic. <laughs> That's good. Okay. We'll work on that. <laughs> oh, and I kind of split Two River Senior Center up into little pieces. So we already talked about their trip, but you can talk about that. Okay. I will talk about the energy assistance appointments. Uh, you can call to set up an appointment about energy assistance um, on the following dates, November 27th, December 11th, and January the 15th. Right. Those are the days that, that they can schedule for. And uh, we'll probably be repeating this over the next podcast or two because it is kind of an ongoing event. Um, and we talked about this in our last episode, um, the recurring events for the seniors. There's bowling league, bingo. bingo. And then I found out that the way we're supposed to pronounce this was Zumba Gold. Zumba Gold. Zumba Gold. Seated. S seated? Seated. They get to do their Zumba when they're sitting down. Oh, okay. But we were calling it Zumba Gold Seated, and it was Oh, yeah. Zumba Gold, but parentheses, Zumba's seated. Correct. Because right, you're sitting. Okay. I right. I have no idea what Zumba Gold is. Well, we'll have to go over there and check it out. Okay. <laughs> I guess we will. I, I need I got to new, learn. I got a new pair of um, yoga pants. That, does, so now I've got like exercise. Does one have to buy clothes. Zumba pants? I'm afraid of what they might look like. like I, Zumba Gold pants? Right. Seated. So. Like, like Disco Inferno. It looked like who was the guy who wore pants? Like gold lame pants. pants or yeah. something. Right. I've always wanted to be him. Okay. Um, and then that's also great. we have drumming for fitness. Okay, that sounds like a fun time. All right. So we already talked about the uh, upcoming trip. Yeah, but no, these are some other. Oh, ones. there's some other yeah. other trips coming up. Christmas stars. Uh, the Xavier Theater Appleton. Uh, right is where that's going to be right uh, and that's on December the 6th correct and then um, Christmas at the palace uh, is going to be another trip at the palace theater in Wisconsin Dells on December the 5th the day before that correct okay sorry about the typing no, I couldn't even follow okay. my own logic it was kind of like circular <laughs> logic in a very uncircular way it's like it keeps me sharp I, you know, I, <laughs> but you just look so <laughs> so perplexed <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> now, I want to talk to, about the Two Rivers Fire Department. And Todd, thank you for posting this event on the Two Rivers Talks um, Facebook because I had not heard of it. Yeah. Um, it's Breakfast with Santa. It's going to be on December the 2nd um, from 9 30 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's sponsored by Two Rivers Local 423 and Fox Communities Credit Union. Um, pro all proceeds do go to charity. You get to enjoy yummy pancakes prepared by Uncle Pancake as you listen to live music. Uncle Pancake. I, I gotta just check the dude out. Yeah. We, the we name should. is awesome. Yeah. Uncle Pancake, if you watch this, can you post a picture of yourself up on the uh, on the comments? Oh, that, that's a good that'd idea. Be cool. Yeah. I I just got some. I, I'm envisioning something, but it's it's good. It's there's there's got to be a story behind that. I don't know. So, I know it involves yeah. syrup. <laughs> <laughs> It always and, does. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're enjoying your yummy pancakes and listening to live music, Santa will be arriving at 11 a.m. It's going to be a fun event. Yes, it I will. Think people are going to have a blast. So go, go out, check out the pancakes and uh, Uncle Pancake and good old Santa Claus and have a nice time. Sounds good. Very good. Uh, we have uh, one other event to talk about, um, and then I think that gets us through the list pretty much, but um, there's uh, the inaugural pub crawl uh, in support of the Haiti Dental Mission uh, that's brought to you by the Two Rivers Family Dental, um, uh, the, the fine folks over there. Um, the, uh, the pub crawl will kick off uh, Saturday, December the 1st at Lee's Never Inn over at uh, 1019 uh, 17th Street okay. here at Two Rivers. Um, check in at 10 a.m. The event starts at 11. Uh, there's going to be a 50-50 and bucket raffles, silent auction, prizes, drink specials, the works. Uh, you can pre-register for this event for just $30. 
The price will be $35, however, on the day of the event. So save yourself $5 and sign up ahead of time. Also helps them get a good headcount for the event. Um, if you pre-register by November the 16th, uh, you can be uh, you can assure your shirt size that you get it for, for the event as well. Right. So that'll be great. And um, you make checks payable to the TRFD missions, TRFD missions, um, and you can drop off or mail those to Two Rivers Family Dental. Sounds great. Sounds like a lot of fun, actually. And they do a lot of good. I've, I've seen a presentation about uh, oh, some of the work that they did last year, and uh, they help an awful lot of people. I think that's wonderful. Um, and then uh, this is this is our, our last event that we're going to talk about, and it's Shopping with the Alpacas. And uh, you can go out to London Dairy Alpaca Ranch right here on the north, north side of town, um, November 23rd through the 25th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and do some early Christmas shopping and get some really, really cool merch. That sounds amazing. I haven't been out there, but I'm, I'm kind of eager to see the place. That's, that's for yeah. people. The, the, you can buy gifts there for people that you really like. You know, um, I'd spring for something. I'm making you a headband you. after all. That's true. So. <laughs> With sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> and the LED light. <laughs> We'll get back to you on that. Okay. <laughs> but um, no, but it, that if you want quality gifts and you want to get something really super special for somebody that you love or you care about, um, that would be a great place to go shopping. That sounds great. Yeah. So I think that's the roundup of events, at least what we found. Now, maybe you've heard of, of an event that we didn't have in the list here. You want to be sure that we, uh, we pick it up uh, uh, or you know, get it into a future event. Um, you can either add it down in the comments or uh, or send us a message up on, on the Facebook page uh, for Two Rivers Talks, and uh, we'll be happy to publicize it for you. We also do, you know, birthday announcements and things like that. So please send yeah. uh, send us your comments, and, and we're happy to make those acknowledgments as well. Um, so I think we're going to be making a transition to our, our next guest, uh, Mr. Jeff Soxie, and we'll be right back. All right, thank you. Our guest today is. Chef Saxi from Raleigh Point Consulting. Raleigh Point Economic Advising. Sorry, right? I, I always call it consulting, but yeah. That's uh, all right, we yeah. are consultants and it's a long name. Yeah, so so uh, economic advising, so I understand there's another Raleigh Point in town, so this is distinct. Yes, we're not uh, property wholesalers. We're not necessarily in the rental housing market. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Nothing at all, absolutely. <laughs> uh, vital vital uh, need for the talent. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're really glad you're able to come on the show today because uh, you've been doing some very exciting things mm -hmm. uh, with entrepreneurship, and I know that that's kind of intersected with some of the work that, uh, that, that Darla and you and I have been doing with BizStarts mm -hmm. um, here in town through the, through the Lester Library. Library. But uh, we want to hear a little bit about, or talk to you a little bit about uh, the uh, the Light Up the Lakeshore competition. Sure. And um, you know, and, and some of the other things you may have planned uh, going forward, because mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, it's all very exciting work that's being done to try to energize uh, entrepreneurship in the mm -hmm. community and uh, and revitalize the area. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that, if you look at my history in relationship with Two Rivers, is that you know, again, I'm a proud son of the community. Um, I wear the fact that I am a Washington High School graduate, class of 95, go Raiders, um, on my sleeve very proudly. <laughs> it is one of those things that, you know, again, as I reflected on my career, which began in state government and academia and has now moved into academia and consulting, um, you gain an appreciation for the place you come from but that appreciation doesn't really bloom until later in life when you begin to miss the things that connected you to a community. Um, so when we first started talking with the city, uh, probably about a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago now, about ways that my firm, um, as well as the work that my partner Keith Lyons and I could do for the community, one of the things that really came to the fore was the fact that we have this central idea that rural communities still need to matter within the context of a global conversation because they are the places where a lot of you know the biggest companies and the best ideas started from and they can continue to be that source of inspiration so when we think about two rivers and we thought pretty hard about the ways that we could try and emphasize the assets of the community the two things that really jumped to mind one is 
again, inspiring more people to consider being entrepreneurs, whether it's opening a small business or becoming the next big app developer. Um, because we have this belief that the best business ideas are always rooted in a place. And it's really centered around this idea that if I think I can do something here, that for as long as I have that idea, that idea is always going to be connected to where I thought of it. Um, so one of the first things that we did uh, as far as, you know, under this broad umbrella of Light Up the Lakeshore, which is really, again, about focusing on all the great things that are happening here and really the possibilities that exist within the community and within this region. Uh, we hosted a business idea competition at the Rotary Pavilion on Neshota Beach on August 2nd. Yeah, I love that. A business that idea was, on the beach. That yeah. Was cool. yeah, that was very cool. Yeah, it was great to see people turn. Even though like the weather wasn't the weather super, was crummy, but, uh, but there was a good audience matter. there, and yeah. people were very engaged. And, uh, and you had a lot of presenters there that day. Yeah, we actually ended up having uh, t ten finalists from really all throughout the region, and they were primarily college students, mm -hmm. uh, which is really interesting because we worked with Ryan Koth, who's a director of entrepreneurship at UWGB and also someone who's very active in the Mems Block Rivers community um, to try and recruit students primarily uh, that either had some experience in presenting ideas or were really more passionate about this I, this notion of entrepreneurship which you know even through the early days of business starts you know one of the things that I observed is that it's really a topic that needs to be taught um, in awareness built around within the community. Because I think that, again, a lot of what we have seen in Two Rivers around entrepreneurship over the last decade or so is really focused on primarily small and retail businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more potential to do a lot more of that plus other things. And again, that all fits under the broad umbrella of entrepreneurship. Yeah, because we saw not everybody's going to do sort of like a gazelle startup that's going to be like a fast growth kind of organization. Right. Um, you know, there are a lot of small businesses, and they're perfectly viable uh, ways that boost the economy. Right. Right. It's just a matter of uh, each of them needs some different things. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and you're right. I mean, I, I think we saw this at uh, a number of the, the districts events. There's a lot of people who have, you know, a quote unquote great idea about something they want to create, but they don't even they don't know where to go next. They, mm -hmm. don't, they don't know what the resources are. They don't know like a process or how to put together a business plan or where to go to for legal advice or some of those things. And, and that's what we we've, we've all been kind of about is trying to connect people with those resources. Right. And at the same time, we also have those service providers, accountants, and lawyers, and, and others that really want to help these businesses but have no experience in doing that either. Mm -hmm. So it's really you know there is a lot of learning that has to occur on both sides of that transaction. So, so as a result, you know, uh, you know what I've at least been seeing, and you tell me if you've seen this as well, that you have people that are a little less experienced. Um, they come up with a great business idea, but because they don't know a process or the right steps to go through to make that a reality, mm -hmm. then they have another business idea next month. Right. You know, and there's the next business idea, but it never happens. It never, never comes to light. Right. And you know, especially for a lot of business owners that have ideas for products, for example. Um, you know, one of the first things that they tend to fall back on is this idea that if I want to sell something, I need to sell in my local market, and the only way that I can do that is to try and get into a retail storefront that I maybe can't afford because of the fact that I haven't thought about you know, revenue, revenue and cash flows. Where the cost of entry to get a product into the market, you know, through an Etsy store or other, other venues, is so low these days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it's far easier to try and just prove out a business idea virtually mm -hmm. while still building that awareness locally of you know the problems. The cost of failure is much lower. Exactly. Because you've got these digital platforms like an Etsy or something like that where you can just put something up and see if people buy it. Exactly. Yeah. So experiment in a place that inspires you, which you know for a lot of people is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What thing I'd like to say about um, about the event in the show to be mm -hmm. was that I've been to Generator, I've been to Connector. It's um, the event is like what you would see on TV, like a Shark Tank type of thing. Can you just kind of explain what the process was and maybe tell us a little bit about the winner? Sure. So the thought behind the business idea competition, and this leads to really the next idea for what we're going to be doing in 2019, 
um, was really focused on this idea that, or the, the premise that you can think of a pretty robust business idea and be able to convey that in an elevator pitch of 90 seconds or less. And that was what we had communicated to all the entrants. Um, we weren't necessarily looking for fully fledged businesses. Mm -hmm. We were looking for an idea of you know, something that might be viable with an understanding of what the market might look like, who the customers might be, uh, without you know, necessarily any of the research to back any of it. Mm -hmm. Because a great idea is the foundation of a business plan, but a business plan isn't necessarily the same thing as a good idea. Um, so we had, again, 10 finalists that competed, and they were judged then by a group of what I thought were very dynamic and experienced entrepreneurs and other um, you know, business leaders within the community. Um, so we had Steve Utek, who's a very active entrepreneur in Green Bay, his company Illumix is starting to grow, um, is one of the judges. Uh, Keith Lyons, my co-consultant, was one of the judges. Uh, Tom DeWayne from J Street Technologies, who's a Manitowoc guy, mm -hmm. and around Kali Grad um, was one of the judges. And then we also had David Trotter, who's the managing director of the Moon and Puego Seed Fund, one of the biggest venture capital firms in the region. Mm -hmm. You know, so to have that depth of knowledge and, and really the diversity of opinions was really interesting. And what was really interesting about the winner is that uh, Maria Rukumar, who at the time was coming off of her freshman year at UWGB and actually had um, presented her idea to uh, Todd Noel and uh, Keith and I, mm -hmm. um, in, in a, at a BizStarts event. Biz right. event. Oh, that was the practice. Yeah, uh, she was practice the, pitch. She's the only one who showed up mm -hmm. for that. <laughs> See, it, it paid. It paid off, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely did. Yeah. <laughs> so her idea was basically to develop a wedding planning app um, because she had a number of friends and who were either getting married or were trying to plan bigger events but couldn't necessarily connect to reasonable resources to do that. Um, so trying to find a wedding photographer or a DJ, um, you know, it's easy to get inspiration for you know, theme and colors off of Pinterest, but Pinterest doesn't necessarily connect you to the people locally that can actually bring that vision to life. Um, and she also saw a number of friends who wanted to do things as kind of a side hustle, either you know, taking photos or you know, putting together a crew of friends to ser do service or provide service at a cocktail reception. Um, and there was no way to coordinate those resources either. So the app is really the transaction that does that. Mm -hmm. And Maria, you know, has taken that idea forward. She's obviously gotten a lot of press, local press because of it, but she's now presenting in the Million Cup circuit mm -hmm. um, in Green Bay and Appleton. She's an intern at the T2 Accelerator in Green Bay. Um, Every time I see her, I'm proud of the fact that she won, but I'm also, again, eager to see that app come to life. Exactly. Because, again, an idea is great, but an idea has to provide the inspiration to actually move something. Yeah. And where, where is she in the process? Do you have any idea? Um, she has a good idea. Okay, so it's... <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, one thing after... I was really impressed with her. I met her beforehand. Mm -hmm. An impressive young woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, and especially for being, for being a freshman. Yep. Yeah. Um, Extre extremely articulate. Very. Uh, very good at uh, like taking feedback and pivoting mm -hmm. and, and learning how to work with an audience and, and understand yes. you know, kind of what they're looking for. So I think with the judges, she was able to really address concerns in an effective way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, you could yeah. really tell, you could see her connecting with them yeah. mm -hmm. better so than some of the others. You know, where there was more of a rapport, and I think that's, that's paramount, you know. Yeah. Um, one thing, the next time you see her, just let her know I did mm -hmm. some thinking after I saw her presentation. Mm -hmm. Because with the app, that's, we go back to this one-stop shopping concept, mm -hmm. you know, like even with Saul Newton, you know, mm -hmm. it's the one place to get all of the, the pieces for the puzzle. Saul Newton, our, our last episode's guest. Right. Uh, see episode two, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the Wisconsin Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Correct. Right. And that's what this app is going to be, but there's so many other types of applications above and beyond weddings. Mm -hmm. And just tell her I made the suggestion that if, after she gets this first bridal one off the ground, then um, she should expand it into other other applications mm -hmm. and call it Beyond the Veil. Uh, 
I thought that was clever. That's really nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, we're really happy that uh, the Maria has done well. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to see more of these. Do you, are you have plans for uh, for future competitions? So, one of the things that we were very adamant about when we actually started doing the work was this idea that any good event has to happen at least twice mm -hmm. in order to be sustainable. So, we're looking at dates and possible formats for another summer competition. Also to make sure it wasn't an accident, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the things that we were really proud about in the summer, uh, in our first event, was the fact that we had so much support from the community. Yeah. I know that your firm, Clock Tower Advisors, you know, offered some in kind support. Our firm, Molly Shoreline, did. Shoreline right. Credit Union right. was a sponsor. Investors Community Bank was a sponsor. Um, and really just, again, this idea that there is a community out there that is starting to grow that can support these entrepreneurs. Um, so we're looking at a summer event, but the what we're starting to ramp up now is actually a spring event, um, which is going to be much bigger in scope than what we had presented last August. Uh, I'm currently meeting with uh, the principals or superintendents from all of the high schools in Manitowoc County. Um, so there are eight high schools in Manitowoc County. Uh, and we're focusing on developing a county-wide student business competi idea competition to be hosted in March and April of 2019. Again, focused on the same kind of elevator pitch idea, um, but this time engaging teams of students, say two or three students or individuals um, from each of the eight area high schools with the idea that, again, we have eight preliminary competitions which will produce eight local winners, um, and then two people's choice winners, which will be selected based on the pitches of all the other final or all the other participants that we will then post publicly for review. Um, and then those ten finalists will uh, gather at an event, um, prim probably at Silver Lake College, although we're still finalizing the, that final venue mm -hmm. for a countywide celebration of entrepreneurship, um, which we'll be hosting in late April, early May. And Sounds fantastic. with the understanding that we'll, we're also actively fundraising for scholarships, a scholarship pool that will then serve as a prize for, for those students. Again, because it's based on this simple concept that if I can think of a good idea and I can think of a good idea that I could do in Reedsville or Keele or Two Rivers, then I can go out into the bigger world, mm -hmm. but that idea still sticks with me. So when it comes time for me to think about where I'm going to actually make my mark, home isn't necessarily the worst place to be to do that. In fact, there might be some really good reasons to start at home. Precisely. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. I, and, I, and I love the fact that, uh, I mean, you, uh, you, you, you're, you're trying new things in mm -hmm. the area. These are new categories of events. I don't think there's ever been any kind of events like that in Mentor County. Um, Not to my understanding. To my knowledge either. Um, so. It's it's very uh, it's very hopeful news I, I think for the area and it's something that uh, that really does uh, bring home the message to I think a core group of people that we don't want to lose out of the county right young people you know, who have ideas and brains and and uh, and will probably go on to do great things when we hope they do at least some of those things here well and it also speaks very strongly to the history of the county. In that you know we have a legacy of very strong and influential family-owned businesses mm -hmm. that you know have succeeded over generations. Now we still see the legacy of a lot of a lot of those companies here, both in properties that are open for development, mm -hmm. um, in other names which are synonymous with with our community. Um, we're looking now for the next generation of those business leaders um, because again I think that one of the things that we tend to ignore even in the conversations around companies like Eggers or Hamilton's or Paragon is the fact that at one time those were nationally or globally recognized brands mm -hmm. that traced their history to Two Rivers. They had their starts here. Exactly. Yeah. And that's something for a community to be immensely proud of. Yeah. It, it really is. And I, and I think so, you know, for, for any naysayers who may, may say, well, well, you know, we, we just don't do a lot of entrepreneurship around here. It, it, it belies the fact that, that there is all that history, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the area. So, no, that's great. Uh, and, and I know that it's not just about uh, these uh, business idea competitions. You've also been doing some really exciting work 
around uh, architecture for, mm -hmm. for buildings in the area. Could you talk a little bit about the, the competition? Sure. Um, so the second event that we did, and again, we were probably a little bit crazy for trying to take all this on within the course of two months, um, was a design weekend where Darla, good, good crazy, good crazy. <laughs> Darla and the other members of the city council were immensely supportive in providing us with the seed funding um, to bring in five architectural firms into the community um, from Milwaukee and the Fox Valley most specifically to try and think about new ways to envision some of the the bigger properties that we just quite frankly haven't thought of great ideas for. Um, there's a tremendous amount of development opportunity in Two Rivers. Um, and so for example, one of the things that has always struck me um, especially going back to really last summer, um, in looking out, in the looking out over Central Park from the council chambers in City Hall, is the fact that there are four properties that front Central Park. You have City Hall, St. John's Evangelical Lutheran, um, the former Wells Fargo offices, and the Community House. The only two of those four properties that could be developed or could be sold are currently for sale. And it's very difficult to think about a think of another community, um, especially with you know the anchor that we have in Schrader's uh, department store, which also provides another kind of enclosure on that whole Central Park concept. Um, it, it's celebrating its history and its heritage with its new sign. Mm -hmm. Those op those development opportunities present the ability, really, an invitation for someone to come in and say, "I want to leave my mark." on a community in a very visible way. Um, and again, given the promise of the market, um, coupled with the amount of riverfront property that we have available. From the old Hamilton? Uh, the old Hamilton area. site, yeah. as well as um, the former mural plant for which others may know as the Eggers West plant. Mm -hmm. um, property which is, of course, under private ownership now, but is you know considered for development and another former mural plant site directly across the river, um, even extending into Man Emmanuel Methodist Church on Mas Madison Street or the former Hands in the Forest property out on Forest Avenue. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of properties that offer a lot of natural beauty and access um, that I don't know that the developer community really recognizes because of the fact that, again, Two Rivers hasn't necessarily been a community that's been in the same types of conversations um, as a Sheboygan, as in Algoma, um, as any of the communities in Door County, uh, where the community offers probably in some respects better access. Um, it offers a lot more internet connectivity for those digital nomads that, you know, want to get away but don't want to fully leave the office. Amen to that. This, <laughs> is, this, is, this is where I do my business and it, it's because it's just, you know, a great place to live and, and easy internet connectivity, like right. you said. You know, I, and I'm really close to Green Bay and Sheboygan and Milwaukee mm -hmm. and, and uh, over in Appleton even. It's not that far of a, a jaunt. Right. Yeah. So so the community is well positioned, but it, you I just, just realized I said I do my business here. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll edit that video. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. Your, 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 business, your business's home is here. As <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's a much better way to put it. <sighs> The magic of editing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I made your eye house broken. So. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You're welcome. That's right. There are puppy pads under the carpet. <laughs> right. yeah. um, so we have a community where the possibilities are virtually endless, and the market hasn't necessarily responded to those possibilities yet. Yes. Um, you know, we've seen obviously some movement around the potential cobblestone hotel in the old Sittinger's hardware property. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really that development or the, the talk of that development which spurred our thought of action around this development weekend. Mm -hmm. Because we know that when you bring in an investment in a development of that magnitude within the context of the scale of this community, the market will begin to wonder why that money is being spent there. And it will begin to explore that market. Um, but the community needs to be prepared for that conversation and have a response to that conversation. True. Um, because quite frankly, again, from our perspective, there have been a number of, of deals and projects that have occurred through no, no one's particular fault over the last 30 years 
where developments have gone into places where, again, in retrospect, probably weren't the most appropriate places for those development to, developments to occur. But without a clear vision of what should go in a place or what could go in a place, it's very difficult for a community to say, well, we want this here. We appreciate your energy. Let's work with you to find a better place for your idea. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, it gives the community a, an ability to have a voice in that conversation and really to shape that community in ways that, that everybody wants and can embrace. Um, so we had this weekend where we brought in five architects and they spent a lot of time here. And what we found in follow-up with the architects is that some of those teams and some of those designers continue to spend time here. Because again, really, it was, it was a wonderful weekend. We brought them in during Ethnic Fest weekend. Okay. Um, so they, got to, to they yeah. got to experience yeah. a community in full. Um, they got to spend uh, their Saturday sitting in the city council chambers looking down on the Central Park and seeing the level of activity that's happening. And they really began to fall in love with the place. Uh, so we have you know, five ideas. Uh, you can see all the, the various perspectives on our website on RaleighPoint.com. Um, and the city is also been very active in promoting those those visions on social media uh, that we're now taking uh, with the help of Vagabond Creative and Jason Priggy's Jason and Tina Priggy's firm in Manitowoc in converting those visions into something that we can actively go out and court developers uh, with. Um, That's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. But that also spurred um, the thoughts of what the next weekend is. Um, so we're looking at a date probably sometime between, and I know that there are only two weekends um, where this could happen between Mother's Day and Memorial Day in May, to bring in uh, another group of architects, probably a bigger group of architects, um, and set them loose upon downtown Two Rivers. I love it. Yeah. I'm amazed. I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Wow, when, when did you decide to do this? I know that you've worked constantly. <laughs> Nothing ever stops, so... Well, it's... The idea for the downtown weekend was solely inspired in... in this is partially to your credit, Darla. Um, to me, the seed of that idea started in this gallery. Oh, because, you know, again, you were able to take a space which had one purpose and was really known for one thing and transform it into something completely different with a different, different sense of vibrancy. And it's really, again, to your credit, a gallery which is connecting the broader world into a conversation of what Two Rivers is. So if you think about what downtown Two, River, Two Rivers has been over the course of the last 80 years, and you think of all the great businesses and historic facades and storefronts that have come and gone through this community over that period, there are a few that have a lasting legacy, Schrader's being the most prominent now. But the, you still see echoes of those things, even in social media conversations, um, in the work that the Van Ginkels are doing, in the historical society are doing to try and preserve the, the conversation around the heritage of what this community was. The Van Ginkels with the Two Rivers Clothing Company? Yeah, and their yeah. historical bus tours. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but again, it's a history that we in the community and we who are from the community are very proud of. But it's a story, again, that isn't necessarily told everywhere within the same context. Because we tend to think of places um, really with more of a, a sorrowful, sorrowful nostalgic bet, right? We, we like to mourn the things that have left rather than understanding the, the natural evolution that occurs in every community yeah. around, you know, some ideas, you know, nearing their time or finding their time has passed and then seeding way to newer ideas that can then move into the future. Yeah, I, I, I gotta say, I mean, as, as a relative newcomer to, to the city, like I was blown, blown away by the, the coverage of the tearing down of the Sudikers, Sweatikers? Uh-huh, Sudikers, uh, mm -hmm. thank you. I, I can tell I'm a newcomer. Um, but uh, like people were talking about like, oh, it was such a great place. Why are they tearing down this place? Well, it's empty. There's mm -hmm. nobody doing right. anything with it. Mm -hmm. Time to move on, folks. You know, it, it just right. it, it blew me away. I, I was a little bit gobsmacked by the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> well, in, in my observation around the Sooners demolition um, was really 
focused on some of the some of the images that were posted on Facebook of some of the just gorgeous painted signage yeah. that had been on that store's walls yeah. going back to the 50s and 60s. Sure. And, and that's the type of you know community porn, so to speak, or design porn mm -hmm. that a lot of communities would die to have. Yeah. But in yeah. many respects, it's still here and it's authentic to this place. So in seeing that image, it, it just leads me to question, well, if that is something that the community once valued, how can we encourage it to value it once again? Here, here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's a question, again, with this design weekend, of how do you envision facades? Um, how do you bring back awnings? How do you envision the streetscape that actually encourages pedestrian activity uh, along the state highway? How do you connect those storefronts to Central Park around, you know, more intentional programming so that there is something to do on every Friday night with this idea that you come into the park, you gather, but you come from some place and you return to that place or you return to a different place. Mm -hmm. And I think the work that obviously has been happening with Two Rivers Pub, um, you know, is one part of that conversation, but it's, it's a start. Right. And the gallery is a start. And there are a lot of different pieces that are starting to come together around what downtown Two Rivers could be. Um, but I think we also need the inspiration of some outside perspective into, you know, to really inspire us to think bigger than you know, in some respects, the way that we have. Sure, sure. Well, uh, Jeff, we're really excited to hear about the plans uh, for moving ahead and uh, everything else that's, that's going on for you. Um, so what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> um, well, in all of your spare time. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I, I'm on the faculty at UW Oshkosh. Um, teaching in public administration and economics. Um, and also, uh, I'm the director of research in the Office of Economic Development and Community Relations there. So we're, you know, again, trying to envision ways that that institution can relate to a broader region. Sure. Um, because they're just, again, it, it connects back to this central tenet that I have that there are places and things that we take for granted in the past because of the fact that we've always related to them in a certain way, mm -hmm. but that's not the only way that we can relate to them. So my work with the university is really focused on that and, and you know, has been focused on um, things like encouraging more entrepreneurship and connections you know, up, of the university back to the entrepreneurial community. Um, and then of course the other thing that I'm you know, proud to be associated with, at least within a Two Rivers context, is that um, my brother and I are very active in the Knights of Columbus Local Council 1957. Um, you can find Tony at the KC Club most Friday nights picking up fish for he and his wife. Um, and uh, we have also been, with my father, part of a conversation over the last six months about the potential of bringing Snowfest back to Two Rivers. Oh, very right. neat. Yes. Yeah, right. As another event, which again has a very strong nostalgic pull. Yeah. Um, but what was, could, what was the last snow fest? Wasn't it like 91, 92? The last snow fest in Two Rivers was in 96. It was 96. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's still a long time it's ago. It's a long yeah. time. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's 22 years ago, but again, it's still something that, at least within the memory of a lot of people who live here, it's a very current thing. Yeah. Um, That's great. You know, it's, it's a thing that, again, when you're trying to Inspire people to think about communities and try and invest in their communities and try and embrace their communities. More events like that, if done well, um, in position within the, the context again of not necessarily what we all remember a thing to be, but how a thing could resonate with um, the types of people we want to bring into a community, um, as well as the people that are here. You know, so connecting the past to the present, which leads to the future. Um, if you can do that around that event, which still has a lot of resonance, both for, again, that legacy of the friendships and memories that were made, as well as the kitsch of the idea of having a snowball fight in the middle of June, you know, in the middle of June. Right. Um, those are things, again, which most communities would, would die to have. Um, but we just have them and they're authentic to here. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's very cool. 
I don't. I that there was a snowball fight in June. Um, so, and I'm going to script the <coughs> history a little bit here. Um, there, there is a YouTube video somewhere that was shared on Facebook um, about you know memories of Snowfest. But the things that I remember um, were the fact that uh, Snowfest really began um, as a public works crew during the the Depression um, found a pile of snow that had been buried. Um, back by School Hill oh, on so the east side, so over by Walsh Field, right, okay. um, that had been buried under a pile of leaves and had remained frozen. And so that simple act, which is very common to Wisconsin um, summers and late springs, became the hallmark of, you know, at its peak, really, a four-day festival, which led into the 4th of July. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So, you know, again, Snowfest is a thing or as an event embraced um, uh, beauty pageants, it embraced uh, baseball tournaments. Um, you know, the two rivers polar bears in some respects are a, an offshoot of Snowfest because the polar bear has long been the logo in the mascot of Snowfest. Okay. Um, there was, you know, at its peak, a two and a half hour parade that ran down Washington Street. Uh, you know, it, it's it's very much a vestige of what the community was. Wait, I'm sorry, a two and a half hour parade. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to picture it. And like, I have seen wow. some of the footage that people have put up <laughs> mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, and it was, I grew up really close to Pasadena, and we used to go to the Rose Bowl mm -hmm. parade, or the Rose Parade, and that's kind of what it reminded me of, because mm -hmm. you did have your, your, you know, your beauty queens, and mm -hmm. you had... With the, the marching bands. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. And, that was, and I, I remember in the early 90s when I first moved here, um, going to see the parade, probably by that time it was a little bit shorter, yep. but still it was very viable and it was, it was chock full. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that so. incredible. <laughs> I know. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Everybody must have had a float. Well, every, you know, well, there's every, nobody at home. Right. I mean, every civic organization and every school and, um, you know, it was one of those unique things about growing up. Uh, really during the end of that era, you know, I was a kid of the 80s in early 90s here um, And I remember all of the playgrounds had uh, School playgrounds had parks and rec staff That staffed them over the summers and one of the things that we all did was build a, a, a float for Snowfest oh, wow. um, So all the, the the playgrounds were represented the churches okay. um, a lot of the businesses sponsored floats and really the the, the highlight of the parade, um, outside of the drum and bugle corps and marching bands that came and entertained everybody, was the fact that you had a, um, a public works snow truck that had been filled with the snow that had been buried the week the year before. Yeah. And this is all organized by the JCs, which is a very vibrant profession or uh, fraternal organization in the community um, up until the early '90s. Uh, they had someone dressed in a polar bear costume sitting on the pile of snow and throwing snow at okay. the people. <laughs> so, you know, again, when you think about Snowfest as, as a, a current relevant entity, there are certain hallmarks that need to, you know, be there. Um, you know, a polar bear, snow, yeah. um, and really the timing of the event as really kind of the kickoff to summer. Yeah. Um, so, a carnival. Music, sure. Um, probably beverages, are are there, other adult film. Are there any <laughs> other events that are? You know, <laughs> great. Don't point at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and otherwise, uh, yeah. So, are, are there um, are there any similar events uh, in Wisconsin? Oh, there are a number. Okay. Um, you know, so like if you think about Hamburger Days in Seymour, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Paper Fest in. Um, Kimberly. But as far as a snow themed event in, in summer? Uh, certainly not. That's you know, again, it's, it's something thing. that's yeah. unique. Yeah. But every community, you know, even Riverfest in Michigan, um, or sub days or you know, right. sub fest or name the, the event weekend in Manitowoc. There are all of these things, you know, all these communities that just maintain um, maintain these events through really force of will and inspiration. Um, a lot of the reason why Snowfest went away into rivers is because of the fact that the organization that had supported it, the JCs, 
started to see a decline in its membership because of the fact that it was an organization that was um, for men only mm -hmm. and it had an age cutoff that you had to be 35 or younger. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the aging of a community where you had this large baby boom population that had come into it, most of those workers and work for most of those residents started to age out during that same period that their kids were starting to get into high school and then mm -hmm. leaving the community. Mm -hmm. Got it. So it was an organization that could refresh over, say, three generations, but couldn't get to the fourth. Okay. So one of the things that always amazes me about Two Rivers and its residents, and really the, the connection that a place like this has to people that are here now, we're here at one point, and have even maybe just experienced passing through on their way to Door County or elsewhere, is the amount of history that still remains. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the amount of history that's shared digitally, you know, in the number of, um, you know, grainy eight millimeter right. films yeah. of it's snow fest, yeah. right. <laughs> or the pictures of, of the fishing fleets that the Leclerc's maintained, you know, on the river. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even first person accounts of, of the history of you know, Hamilton's or, you know, bowling leagues at the community house or, you know, various social clubs that had existed. Uh, this is a community that has a really deep and rich history that I think everyone here really understands. But again, it's, it's a credit to the organizations like the Historical Society and the Hamilton Woodtype and Printing Museum um, that are really trying to maintain, preserve, and promote that history. Absolutely. Well, I know also that we will also provide links um, to Raleigh Point, mm -hmm. um, and we will also provide links that will get you to where you can see um, the results of the design weekend, um, the different renderings by the five different architectural um, groups. And uh, I know that there's footage out there of Light Up the Lake Shore, mm -hmm. and um, I believe was somebody was somebody a video taping that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can check that out because that's something that as a resident in Two Rivers, eventually, you know, as this comes around, um, hopefully that uh, you will take advantage or someone you know who wants to become an entrepreneur or has a great business idea that they can take advantage of what is available to them and to you um, through both these gentlemen's businesses. So I really appreciate you coming on and we covered a lot of information today and I'm really, I'm, I'm excited to hear about your ideas for the next couple of months, what's coming up, because I hadn't, <clears throat> I hadn't heard that before. So I'm stoked. Absolutely. Yeah, me too, I'm pumped about it. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for being such a great supporter of the community and for bringing new fresh ideas to the place and uh, we're, we're looking forward to hearing about your ongoing adventures. Well, um, thanks to you both for bringing Two Reverse Talk into life or talks into life um, really again is a platform to you know again talk about the things that are important to matter fantastic if you've tried thank you and <laughs> thank you again, for though. your kind words about the gallery absolutely I, I really appreciate it. you know if we have one success from light up the lake shore as as of 2018 it is basil oh my goodness oh wow well, there you go I'm very proud thank <laughs> you Jeff, thanks very much all right Pleasure is always time and we will be back with our musical guest in just a little while. Hi, hey, we're back with our uh, musical guest this week, who is uh, Mr. James Willoughby of Two Hello. Rivers. Nice to meet you, James. It's uh, nice to meet you as well. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Darla and I were excited to uh, learn that you'd be able to come and join us. Um, and we wanted to learn a little bit about uh, your art and sort of uh, you know what kind of music you like to play and you know, how you got started. You know, tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I've been primarily playing music for a majority of my life. I don't know exactly when I started. I was always fooling around and stuff whenever I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, but I started playing guitar probably around early grade school and that kind of thing. I was heavily interested in percussion and, and that. And I used to listen to a lot of rock tunes when I was when I was younger, and as I got older, I started getting into more like jazz and different things, a lot of experimental, almost avant-garde kind of stuff. Um, Very interesting. And uh, do, you, do you come from a family that, that has done a lot of music? Um, the family that I grew up with here, I've got my biological father who lives across the country, um, and that was kind of a, an interesting story, but um, like 
we were separated for the whole life and whatever, pretty much. Uh, but I was raised primarily in my mom's house, and they had a lot of okay. really good records that I would um, grow up listening to, such as like Led Zeppelin and all that. But uh, nobody else in the house really played any music. Nobody did anything. I was the only one who did that. But my biological father played guitar and piano and all that, and he actually makes a living in an '80s band. And I just thought nice. it was really cool that like. I don't know. Without his influence all that time, like I still, still grew up to be a musician. So, so the whole so. nature versus nurture question, exactly. was, a little bit. <laughs> there's, there's, there's definitely some nature involved there. Mm -hmm. I think it both played a part though, because they very helped my uh, my artistic direction, my ideals of what I like to take influence from. So. Yeah, yeah. So now you don't just play guitar though. No, you, you play uh, percussion. What else? Um, I play guitar, bass, drums, uh, a little bit of piano to where people would probably consider it more keys. Um, but I used to play in jazz bands and jazz combos and that kind of thing, so I grew up listening and playing with a lot of different people who would end up expanding on that kind of stuff. So. Okay, okay. What uh, what kind of music do you gravitate towards uh, these days? Uh, that's a very strange question for me to answer. <laughs> I listen to a lot of what people would consider experimental stuff. Um, okay. I, I went to music school briefly over at McNally Smith, and so I was really interested in recording and experimental recording and that kind of thing so I got into like the Grateful Dead and Animal Collective and different things for like experimental recording kind of things that they do um, and so that's one thing that I really look into like bands such as the Mars Volta, I really like Ween and what they've done um, I really like artists who tend to push the boundaries of what they're doing that's why I really like the art rock kind of movement my uncle turned me on to a band called uh, Arcade Fire which does a lot of that kind of thing where they even implement full albums into like small screenplays, um, and it's really that is awesome. So it's like a like a, a multimedia kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And you and I, we've known each other for several years. Yeah, several years. N no, never no. knew each other real super well because mm -hmm. you were in school with my son Jack, mm -hmm. and uh, I just remember well. And Jack was in band, and you were in band, and you and he hung out, and uh, I just remember being always being very impressed with your musical ability. You were always a very quiet child, so we never really actually had a whole conversation. <laughs> but um, I, I just remember I always really just enjoyed um, being able to see you perform. And uh, for you and I to run into each other again was pretty, pretty nice. It was yeah. a nice little happy accident. So um, you're going to... Uh, you're going to play two or three tunes for us, mm -hmm. and uh, I want you to just whatever, it, whatever strikes your fancy. If you want to sing, sing. If you want to just play, um, just play. All right. Whatever you feel like doing, because that's what we're all about here. It's whatever yeah. the artist wants to express at the moment. So, in just one moment, Mr. James will be will be performing for us, and. Uh, I know you're going to like this, so stay tuned. Whenever you're ready. <clears throat> the wash is up, it's hanging up, and all I have is nothing. Nothing to do, nothing to say. I think I must be dreaming. The sun comes up, and I'm all washed out. What is this one? I don't think I will ever return again, my friend If I were king, I wear a ring I'd never hide my big ball up I'd stay alert, I'd dress to kill I might even tell you something oh, The sun comes up in the marsh down Is this one dear what's talking about? I don't think I will ever return again, my friend
was a is what the deaner was talking about. I'm pretty sure that's that that is what the deaner was talking about um, by we. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna meander into a couple uh, couple of originals. Um, I don't have any material released at the moment, but I've been working on recording and trying to pr like uh, put out some stuff recently. Um, and yeah, this is a. Uh, I usually experiment with these different tunings. now called Heart Mind, but it was originally inspired, even though it's a pretty um, major key oriented piece that isn't so dark sounding, I, I tend to take it as more one of the more lighter kind of things that I end up playing um, or calm, but the inspiration for it ironically came from A Clockwork Orange, and I used to call this song Devachka um, after their uh, knapsack, which is a, a fake form of slang that was made invented by um, I'm totally blanking on the author right now. Um, Burgess, Burgess. Anthony Burgess made up the uh, slang, and Devachka meant like a young woman. So there we go. And this is uh, a yeah, Devachka. 